One gift that God has given me, the love of books, the golden key that opens an enchanting door to worlds I never knew before, a world of imagination that carried me from pole to pole within a twinkling eye and back again. As a boy, I traveled to places impossible for me to see, and yet my bookshelf made them real to me. The world of my bookshelf, I'll remember it always. This is The Bookshelf. Adaptations of favorite Christian children's literature. Stories brought to life by The Bookshelf. The radio stations of the Moody Bible Institute bring you the seventh in a 15-chapter series of The Prairie Princess, created by Margaret Epp and freely adapted for radio by Phyllis Fox. The Prairie Princess is the story of the intense joys, disappointments, and personal spiritual growth of the lives of the Scott family, as told by the younger girl, Sarah Naomi Scott, The Prairie Princess. Stuart? Yeah? Mom said to finish up because we got to get ready for church. Right. I have a few more knives and I'll be right in. Are you going to church tonight? Well, yeah. We've been going every night. I know. Did you hear about Sarah? You mean her decision to let the Lord take over her life? Yeah. Well, Kathy ran out to the fields to tell me. It's wonderful. You think she did it to get on the good side of Mom and Dad? Uh, Hand me the other knife, would you? Oh, sure. Well, I don't think she did, Robbie. She's been feeling God pulling her for a long while. Well, that's why she's been so ornery lately. Well, I haven't been ornery. Does that mean God isn't pulling me? No, Robbie. You're a lot like me. Quiet. You run away from God a different way. I'm not running away from God. I don't even think about him. Well, that's a way of running away. Look, Stu. Kathy didn't give herself to Jesus until she was 14. 14. Mm -hmm. I'm only 12. That's two more years. I was five when I gave my heart to Jesus. You were? How did you know what you were doing? Robbie, do you understand what it means to be a child of God? Sure. I hear it every Sunday. It means that Jesus' blood covers all your sins. You ask him to be your savior because you believe he's the son of God and can do that for you. Well, you know it in your head. What's that supposed to mean? It means you know all the terms, but it's more than that. It's knowing you love God and His Son so much you want to become a part of His family. Saving you from sin is important, but asking Jesus into your heart because you love Him means so much more. Everything that Jesus said is true and applies to your life. Oh, I believe it. I I just don't want to do it now. Remember the verse of Scripture uh, that speaks about now being the time of salvation? I'm not saying no to Jesus. Are you saying yes? I see what you mean. Brother Murchison, your sermon on Gideon was a real inspiration. I, I'm happy God spoke to you through it. Well, no, if it isn't a little lassie. How are you, child? Fine, Brother Murchison. I... I have something to tell you. Well, now, speak away. I... I... Don't be afraid, Princess. Well, I... I lied to you that time you met me. You see, I, I wasn't a Christian then, but I am now. And I just want to say that I'm sorry about what I said... And God's forgiven me, and I want you to, too. Well, I already have, Sarah. But you know, God does more than forgive. What do you mean? He forgets. Hebrews 8, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. When God says, I remember no more, (laughs) that means forgetting. When did you accept Jesus into your heart, Lassie? Today, in in the woodshed. Father, help me. 
He said I didn't have to wait until evening. Ah, Lucy, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, many valuable lessons in life are learned in the woodshed. <laughs> Do you remember what I said to you when you first said you were saved? No, sir. I'm afraid I don't. I said, God bless you, for such is the kingdom of heaven. I'll never forget it now, sir. <laughs> I'm sure you won't, Lucy. Uh, we've got to be off. I, I just want to say it's been a real blessing to have you with us. And we hope to see you again next year. Ah, uh, Lord willing, I will be. Have you seen Robbie? I think he's still in church. Oh, there he is, coming out now. Robbie? Looks like he's waiting to speak with Brother Murchison. Well, uh, we're all set to go. Well, not quite. Robbie's talking to Brother Murchison. They're going back inside. Hey, you don't think maybe... Yes, Sarah, I think so. Oh, wow. Two lost lambs in one day. Why don't we sit quietly and pray? This has been the most wonderful day of the year. Sure has. You and Robbie can celebrate your birthdays on the same day. What do you mean? Well, this is like a second birthday. It's your spiritual birthday. You mean we're one day old in the Lord? That's right. How old are you, Mom? Fifteen. Fifteen? Boy, you must have waited way past being fourteen before you gave your heart to Jesus. I'm fifteen, too. You are? Mm. You see, your father and I weren't brought up in Christian homes. And it wasn't until we were grown that we even heard what it means to be a Christian. How did you find out? Jane Bolton invited us to meet us. But, but Aunt Jane doesn't go to church. She used to. And Lord willing, she'll start going again. Fifteen years old. Boy, you guys are really young. <laughs> you fine, Princess. No matter how old you are in the Lord, there's so much more learning to do. You always manage to stay young. Oh, come to, to the, the church. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, come to the church in the day. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little round church in the bay. I painted that evening was full of such happiness and love. The colors were brilliant. I was so happy and happy that Robbie was part of God's family. Right on the day I became a child of God. But not everything is so easy when you're a Christian. And I found that out the very next day when I went over to apologize to Aunt Jane and Linda. Yes, c Well... So it's you. Aunt Jane, I... I mean, Miss Bolton, could I see Linda, please? Could you give me one reason why I should allow it? A girl who could deliberately do what you did, Sarah Naomi Scott. I'm very sorry. I came to say I was sorry. Please, may I see Linda? If you could have seen her the way I found her. It took hours to calm her. And I can't have her upset again. But I don't want to upset her. I... I asked Jesus into my heart today. I love Linda now. I want to tell her so. Please? I'm afraid. I can't risk it. Please? Sarah, I don't want to slam the door in your face. I advise you quietly but firmly, leave my porch, my house, Linda's home, and never come back again. Yes, ma'am, Miss Bolton. Haven't you ever done anything that needed to be forgiven? Well, I've uh, just about got this stitched. You've been 
mighty quiet, Kathy. It's a quiet day. Kirby coming by this evening? Yes. Well, you don't sound very happy. Oh, I am, really. Now, there, I'm finished. Kathy, I know my children. Now, what's bothering you? Mom, was there ever a time when you felt God calling you to be something besides Daddy's wife? No, not that I recall. Oh. Why? Well, I don't know, but ever since Brother Murchison spoke about letting God lead you, no matter what the cost, well... Well, what? I think God may be calling me to the mission field. Have you spoken to Herbie about it? No, but I think he senses something wrong. So you think maybe he senses you're having second thoughts? Yes. Kathy, did you... Did you ever think he was having second thoughts? Not really. Kathy, what if he didn't feel called to the mission field? What then? I already made that decision last night. Not that he's asked me to marry him. I, I mean, not in those exact words, but we do love each other. But I know no matter how much I love him, I've got to follow God's leading and trust he'll work things out. You make me so humble. Please, Mother. No, I mean it. When you were a baby, well, with all our babies, we dedicated you to the Lord, telling him, Whatever he wants. I mean, you don't belong to us. You're borrowed. Your true parentage is of God. And when I see God moving in your life, it, it humbles me. <laughs> oh, I love you, Mama. And I love you, too. <laughs> now, don't worry. <sighs> Everything... Back so soon? Sarah, baby, what's wrong? Oh, Mama, Aunt, Aunt Jane wouldn't let me see Linda. Oh, baby. She's so angry. I tried to tell her. I told her how Jesus was my friend and how I wanted to ask Linda to forgive me. She wouldn't let me see her. She told me to leave and never come back. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. No, it isn't. I want so much for Linda to be my friend. I want to tell her about what happened and to me. And, oh, Mama, it's terrible. I don't know what to do. Oh, Sarah, you can pray, baby. You can claim God's promises. That's what being a child of God is about. Oh, you can call on him and believe he'll work things out. Oh, and he will, Sarah. He will. This has been the seventh in a 15-chapter series of The Prairie Princess, created by Margaret Epp and freely adapted for radio by Phyllis Fox. Join us next time as we bring you the eighth chapter of The Prairie Princess. You've been listening to another dramatic adaptation of Christian children's literature, brought to life by the bookshelf. This has been a radio presentation produced by the Broadcasting Department of the Moody Bible Institute.